Welcome to this series of videos where we talk to Dr. Warren Corns, who's Research and Technical Support Manager at PS Analytical, about uh, mercury and the various issues to do with mercury in the environment and analysis of mercury. So, how do you structure the instrument to actually use atomic fluorescence to detect mercury? The optical layout of atomic fluorimeter is actually fairly simple. What we have is a, a mercury lamp, mm -hmm. which is used for exciting the mercury atoms. And this is focused using a, a biconvex lens into an atom cell area, which essentially is a chamber where we introduce atomic mercury vapor. So the light is then focused onto these atoms. The atoms are excited. And then when they fall back to the ground state, they emit light at the same wavelength, which is detected using a photomultiplier tube. And this is located at right angles to the excitation source to minimize any background radiation within the cell. There's also an interference filter um, at 254 nanometers, which serves as a wavelength isolator to improve the selectivity of the instrument. Um, the atomic fluorescence signal is proportional to lamp intensity, so it's very important to have a very stable uh, lamp source. And uh, we achieve this by uh, using a, a heater around the lamp. And in addition to this, we have a reference cell, which constantly monitors the output of the lamp, so that if there is a small amount of drift, we can apply a, a ratiometric uh, correction. So if the lamp becomes more intense, the atomic fluorescence becomes more intense. By taking a ratio of those two signals, you can compensate for small changes in the lamp intensity.